Hello guys, I am Flash Isaac. Today I'll be taking you through static and dynamic friction. A few days ago, I released a video on friction where I explained that friction is a force opposing relative motion. So if this is a surface and this is a block, if you are trying to slide this block through this surface, you need a force. So you are pushing it this way, something here is preventing it from moving. So you need to overcome that force for a body to move over another. So that's what we call frictional force. Now, when you push this body and it doesn't move, that force that is able to stop it from moving, that is preventing the relative motion, that's static friction. On the other hand, if after pushing for some time, the body begins to move, then you keep pushing, pushing, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. So the force acting in that body that is stopping the motion is a kinetic friction. So although the body is moving, but something is still preventing it from moving. So for you to uh, overcome that force, you need to push hard. So you need to continue applying force that is able to uh, overcome that resistance. So kinetic friction is a friction that stops two body from moving. So it opposes relative motion. It opposes body from sliding over each other. If you are pushing the car, you push, push. At that point you are pushing that it's not moving. That friction, that force stopping the motion is static friction. It prevents object from moving. However, once after pushing for some time, push, then the car now starts moving. You continue pushing, push, 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 push. Then it's moving. So that friction that is acting at that point is kinetic friction. Now notice something. When you are pushing the car, before it starts, it moves. It takes a lot of time. But after it, it begins to move, you discover that you are applying less force. So the force that you need to keep it moving is lesser than the force that you need to start moving it. That shows that static friction is greater than kinetic friction. Because what is stopping the body from moving is more than what is uh, what you need to stop a moving body. So you can be asked, why is static friction or, uh, greater than kinetic friction? It is because the coefficient of friction in static friction is greater than coefficient of friction in kinetic friction. This coefficient of friction, mu, something like this. So that's mu, coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction shows the level of friction a body exhibits. So the bigger the coefficient of friction, the more the frictional force, the more the resistance. So can static friction, coefficient of static friction is greater than coefficient of dynamic, uh, kinetic friction. A kinetic, kinetic friction is also referred to as dynamic friction. It's dynamic, it's moving. Meanwhile, uh, static friction is also referred to as stationary friction. So I think this clears the air on the definition. Dynamic, it's moving stationary, is on one spot. Now look at the forces that act on a body. This is your block on a bench. Now, let's say the weight of this block is, the mass is 5 kg on the bench. So it's applying a force down. So this is, the weight is acting downward. Weight, W, it goes down. Now, do you know that as that block is on top of the table, there is a force from the table or the reaction from the table which is equal to the weight or equal to this mass on the body. Yes. So as you are here, the force, this is, is my hand. I'm able to hold it because the force this is applying to my hand is the same thing as the force my hand is applying to it. So anybody, when the body is on top of another body, the second body offers a force trying to push it up. That's what we call reaction. So remember, you say uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's law. That's the third law. So once you push here, the more I push it, the more the F uh, force the board is pushing me with. So the weight of a bo uh, the body acts downward. Weight. And remember that weight is equals mass times gravity. Weight is mg. 
then weight is equals normal reaction so because weight goes down normal reaction goes up and the normal reaction is equals weight so therefore normal reaction is equals w is equals mg so let's say you are pushing the body with this force so let's say this is the force you are pushing the body with applied force so this is the frictional force Frictional force is opposing the motion and also there is another force here that is uh, this is the moving force, this is the frictional force so if you subtract uh, if you add this two it will be equal to the applied force because it's not all the forces you are applying that is actually moving the body so some are used to overcome friction so these are the body that act on the forces that act on the body coefficient of friction mu is equals friction over normal reaction this implies that frictional force is equals mu n normal reaction and recall that normal reaction is the same thing as mg so therefore frictional force is equals to mu mg friction is equals to mu w so these are useful formula that we use to solve questions under uh, friction now look at something else this is for a flat surface this surface is flat so let's say you have a body like this this angle so it's inclined this is a framework and the same boss is here now how do you solve this can you not say can you say uh, this is the weight of course no weight adds downward which means here is it weight at this same at this angle so weight is equals mg it adds downwards but this body is inclined now is this weight equal to the reaction no because the weight is acting downward but the body is inclined so the reaction is this way this way so in that case we need to resolve this weight into this vertical and horizontal that is where we now see resolution of force or resolution of vectors with this knowledge you started vector because vectors have magnitude and direction why scalar quantities they don't have direction they only have magnitude or they only have size so this weight is acting downward this is the arrow now we have to resolve it to this way so to so, uh, vertical this way so that here it will be equal the normal reaction similarly we can resolve this weight to the horizontal axis for it to act this way or act this way now take a look at this trick this is the weight is going here where we want to resolve it to this place so w is equals now this is the angle anytime you are resolving towards the angle as you are resolving towards this place you notice we are closing the angle close is cos cos so therefore w is equals mg or weight cos theta now if you are resolving towards this axis we are resolving it towards the horizontal axis look at it this angle we are opening it up it's coming so it's here we are opening the angle we are making it wide so when we are opening the angle it's sine so here is w is equals mg sine theta so this is the weight in this axis this is the weight in this axis in that case this w and is equals w is equals mg cos theta cos theta so the, this is the and let's say the force is acting this way if the force is acting this way applied force obviously frictional force is acting that way so we have to look for these three things from that diagram now i deliberately did not clean this diagram because this is all we need to solve that question now compare the two that question and this diagram so this is an illustrated version of that question so we've ex expanded this and we already have the stuff we need to solve now it says uh, find the parallel force to the plane to slide it downwards now what is that force that is the moving force which is this fm 
So this is the moving force parallel. That means they are together, they are parallel. So this is the force parallel to push it downward. The applied force is coming here. Friction is doing its own to stop motion. Then this moving force is the force that the body is moving with. So this is the force. This is the force parallel to the plane. This is the plane. Plane. And this is the force, you see? So it's parallel to the plane and it's trying to move the body downwards. So that force is simply is equals mg sine theta. So mass is 5 kg. So given m is equals 5 kg. So let's take g as 10 meter per second square. Acceleration due to gravity as 10 meter per second square approximately on earth. In that case, the force will be equals mass 5 times 10 times sine 30 equals 50 sine 30. Good. This should give you 25. 50 times 1 over 2 equals 25. So sine 30 is 25. This is Newton. That is the unit of force. Now, look at B. It says, find the normal reaction between the surfaces. Now, I told you, this is the normal reaction N. And recall that normal reaction is equals the weight. So weight is mg cos theta. Normal reaction is equals weight is equals mg cos theta. So therefore, N is equals W is equals mg cos theta. And this is equals mass is 5 times 10 times cos theta. 5 times 10 is 50 cos theta. The last time I check. It should give you 43.3 Newton. So this is the normal reaction in the body. So what is coefficient of friction? <laughs> Easy. Coefficient of friction, I told you, C, mu is equal to the force over uh, normal reaction or over reaction. You can represent N with arrow. So you can represent it with arrow, reaction or N, normal. So you can do any one you want. So this is the uh, moving force over the normal reaction. In that case, we should be uh, moving force is 25 and normal reaction is 43.3. So this is 25 over 43.3 Newton. So number two says, okay, this is, you can break it down. Yeah. It says a boy pushes a 500 kg bus along a floor. So that means they have something like this. And this is 500 kg with a force of 200 Newton. So F applied force is equals 200 Newton. If the velocity of the body is uniform, uniform velocity. The coefficient of friction between the bus and the floor is this is a very simple question. The coefficient of friction between them from that question are uniform velocity is simply the force acting force of a normal reaction. That is the uh, uh, coefficient of friction. Now mu is equals force is 200 Newton. So 200 over what is the normal reaction normal reaction is equals weight is acting down and weight is equals normal reaction and it's equals mg so normal reaction is mg which is mass times gravity that is 500 times 10 so this is equals uh 200 over 5000 yeah so i think this is 2000 newton yeah I think so. So in that case, it's still the same thing. Here will be 2000, 2000. So Newton. So that's a coefficient of friction. And it doesn't have a unit. So uh, this cancels this, this cancels this, this cancels this, this cancels this. So the answer is 0 0.4. So I guess you've been having a good time. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more 
amazing videos. Thank you.